This news update is brought to you by Say hello to Shanta. Shanta is an entertainer, but she also loves to be entertained, which is why she has Flow TV brought to her through Flow's 100% fiber to the home network. It's great for busy Shanta because she can control the time she watches her favorite shows, play back from the start in case she missed it, or even record with cloud video recording. And with her Flow Services bundle, enjoys much more for much less. Visit any Flow retail outlet. Call 1-800-804-2994 or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One of a kind connection. This is how we flow. Welcome to this Barbados Today News update for Thursday, September 29. Thank you for joining us. I'm Desmond Brown. Acting Prime Minister Richard Seeley, Attorney General and Minister of Home Affairs Adriel Brathwaite, and Director of Department of Emergency Management Kerry Hines updated the nation this morning on the passage of Tropical Storm Matthew. In this special edition, we bring you a recording of this morning's press conference, which was held at the DEM headquarters in Warrens. We are very grateful as a nation that we've been spared the worst of this event, the Tropical Storm Matthew. Uh, I have been doing some moving around this morning uh, to be all clear was given. And of course, I have been heartened at the response of Barbadians um, to trying to mitigate the effects of, of this, this disaster. Mercifully, as I said, it was not nearly as bad as it could have been. And I would want, at the outset also, to extend prayers and best wishes to our neighbors, many of whom have had it worse than us, and some of whom will have it worse as the system continues to intensify as it goes across the uh, Caribbean Sea. I, of course, could not but come to this particular institution, the Department of Emergency Management. They have been working tirelessly through the night, and I thought it was appropriate that I come and thank the members of the National Emergency Operations Committee, the NEOC. It would have been activated now for some 72 hours or so. Uh, as soon as we received word that we would be feeling the effects of some sort of system, even before it properly organized itself into a tropical storm, the NEOC was in operations. And I also want to thank everyone associated with the NEOC. Many of them are still here. The NEOC is still activated, so they would be sleep deprived. As at 8 o'clock, we only had 63 reports uh, at the NEOC. 24 were fallen trees, 7 related to utility poles, 9 reports of power outages, and 9 reports of damage to houses, and 8 reports of flooding across the island. Um, all agencies for rehabilitation work have been informed and have been advised, and the teams are currently assessing the situation. Officials from the Urban Development Commission are on the road. Officials from the Ministry of Transport and Work, in fact, the Minister of Transport and Work himself is on the road. As we speak, he is actually heading into the Bridgetown area, Murphy's Pasture, New Orleans, etc., along with the Acting Minister of the Environment, who has responsibility for the drainage and sanitary jetty inks. And they are going to assess that particular community or those communities because even as far away as Deacons and Headleys and so on, there are, they are some drainage considerations down there and communities that are particularly susceptible to flooding. As you know, we had, a, in some cases, as much as six inches of rain in, in a very short period of time. So we are currently engaging in that effort. I also would have to be thankful that so far, the reports that we have suggest no injuries and no loss of life, and that, again, is something we, we are quite thankful for. Events of this nature all too often sometimes see tragedy uh, reaching, reaching, uh, reaching house, house, household, and uh, mercifully, we have not had that to deal with. Um, a damaged roof can always be repaired, but of course, a life cannot be replaced, and that we are, we are again genuinely thankful that we can report that situation as of this morning. As far as the country is concerned, Barbados is back to a place of normalcy. Our roadways are clear. 
the airport is operating, has been operating since 8 o'clock this morning. Um, the seaport, uh, cargo was discharged as early as 8 o'clock this morning. Operations are normal there. And, um, and indeed, businesses and government departments should, should, should be all back out to work. The exception, and I think we would all understand why, would be our, our schools. They will remain closed today. So all daycare nurseries, daycare centers and nurseries, primary and secondary schools, the Samuel Jackman Prescott Polytechnic, the Barbados Community College and the Erdiston Teachers Training College will remain closed today. The other thing we can report on is that most of the public shelters have been closed and uh, shel shelter wardens, of course, will remain on standby in the event that there's a need for their services to be once again um, act activated. Hillaby's, Turner's Hall and Leicester Vaughan remained open during the night with occupants. We had uh, only four occupants, Iron White, uh, for shelters. So even the need for shelters, of course, was, um, was minimal. And, um, and we, are, we are glad that has been the case. The Transport Board has gradually resumed its services starting at 7.30 this morning and it is anticipated that they will be fully operational by noon. The Health Services has reported that the 511 number, 511 number for the ambulance service is once again operational and all polyclinics ex ex expect to resume normal service at 12 today. I think you would appreciate that emphasis will be placed on urgent cases. QEH, the Psychiatric and General Hospital, all of our hospitals have resumed normal operations as well. The uh, Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association has been in contact with its shareholders, its stakeholders, the various members and our visitors are all comfortable. Um, the issue of water to the west coast has been sorted and even though the pressure is a bit low, at least again normalcy has returned to the hotel sector so our visitors are also comfortable and um, again we will uh, continue to monitor that, that situation but I think it's, it's important to note that. So I um, again want to, get, want to uh, assure the public that the NEOC uh, remains active and will continue to receive and process the reports as they come in. And I, once again, on the issue of those reports, it has mainly been fallen trees and, of course, power outages. I suspect the two are often related. Um, and these matters have all been, been addressed. And once again, normal life has returned to Barbados. So permit me to thank uh, all the members of the National Emergency Operations Committee, the Meteorological Department, our first responders and emergency services, and of course you, the media, uh, all in all, and through you, the public of Barbados, who have worked with us. Um, it is always a, a very um, touchy issue on how we manage these events, but the decisions relating, for example, to closing businesses and closing schools was in the interest of public safety. And, um, and by way of information for members of the public, it is not done on a whim. There is a committee composed of private sector, public sector individuals who work, uh, who work through the night and who assess based on the meteorological reports, and um, we, we do these things in the interest of public safety. And I can say that the public has generally cooperated, and we want to also thank them. And um, once again, we want to uh, continue to monitor the situation. In the fullness of time, there will be some further reports. Uh, I know that, for example, People like to have some idea of the value of the damage. We are, these are still early 
early early times and the damage assessment surveys and so will be will be done and rather than um, give any 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 figure that is too vague it, it, we need to properly assess exactly how our infrastructure has been impacted how the various houses have been impacted the business places and then we can we can speak to those issues from from a more uh, definitive perspective so once again thank you all Mr. Excuse me, Mr. Atkins, Prime Minister, you're also the Minister of Tourism. You mentioned the Hotel and Tourism Association. We know that tourism would have been impacted. I mean, we are at least one Virgin Atlantic flight had to divert from London uh, to Antigua en route to Barbados. Uh, what were the other impacts? How was the tourism sector impacted? Well, the flights that were diverted should all land this morning, so the impact will be delays, British Airways and Virgin were, were, were diverted. In one case to Antigua and the other case to Grenada. They will they will they will land. It just means that people will leave a little later than they anticipated. So for example, persons booked on the British Airways this afternoon will leave at seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, American Airlines had to cancel I, at least one flight, but they're doubling up to make sure they can still bring in their people. Uh LIAC of course is the one that will have it the, the hardest because they have the the, the, the most the, the largest number of movements and of course because their situation is, is, is not peculiar to Barbados the St Vincent Airport for example only just opened back um, so so Liat is now trying to readjust its schedule to see that they can get its passengers around the Caribbean but in in the in the strictest sense of the word other other than some inconvenience for our visitors. There's been there's been no no impact beyond that. So we didn't lose any business. We didn't we didn't lose any business as a result. Mr. Acting Prime Minister, I want to take you back to what I consider a serious issue regarding the opening of businesses. If a state agency says shut down, is there a legal position as to whether you can or cannot, and what are the consequences? That, Again, that is a very naughty issue, and I know that it is receiving the attention of the Minister of Home Affairs, also in his capacity as, as Attorney General, because some of what you are alluding to perhaps has to be looked at. I mean, we have protocols in place, and, and, and we expect uh, people to, to abide to them. I mean, we, we, the reason why the, the NEOC and, um, and, and all of the various committees that that that, uh, that are subordinate to it, for example the TEOC, which is the Tourism Emergency Operations Committee, it's, it is it is public sector and private sector, so that we can work together on these issues. You don't like to have to legislate everything. Um, you, you would expect that where national safety is concerned, where life and limb is concerned, we should be able to work together. Um, do we have to look at it? Maybe we do. I did hear these reports of a, a major uh, business place that, that, that opted to, to, to stay open, and um, of course that was appropriately dealt with, but I, I, I would rather not say anything specifically on that specific case. I happen to know the proprietor quite well, and I'd be curious to hear his side before I say anything publicly on it. But generally speaking, we, we expect um, we expect people to cooperate because the, the, these decisions are made in the interest of of, um, of, of, of safety, of, of life, of saving lives. Um, I mean, the truth is an event like what we had yesterday, under different circumstances, uh, had we probably not taken the decision, it is entirely possible that somebody, um, maybe a, a young person, someone elderly, someone infirmed, could have perhaps lost their life, but but by taking the decision to to to, to shut businesses, stay indoors, um, uh, establish the regime for shelters, etc., to function, that is that is that is what what we do. And um, again, I I, I would sincerely hope that a, a lot of what I'm hearing isn't quite true, and and eventually we will we will have to uh, do what we need to do. You would have an investigation into these matters. Might really That's you. a very strong word, but mm -hmm. but the point is, I think we need to hear the other person's perspective on this. I mean, I I, I mean, I I'm not not uh, going to just 
you know, run off and pass judgments based on social media reports, which, I mean, which can be quite extreme, quite vulgar, quite comical. Um, and I think you need to have a serious sit down and, 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 and trash out these issues because one of the things we have to discuss even going forward is the whole concept of, of um, our understanding, for example, of even giving the all clear and, and first responders and the like and, and who can, uh, there is a protocol in place actually, but it's, I think we need to maybe inform people a little better on it because, um, you know, there are critical operations that you would expect to have a head start on them with the public in order to get the country back to normalcy in the most efficient and organized manner. So, so those are some issues that are receiving uh, attention of the Ministry of Home Affairs and the Department of Emergency Management. One of the points that even with the consultation the NEOC we said was that, you know, this is for all intents and purposes just a skirmish. Um, but, but we have to learn from it in the event that we do have a uh, full-fledged major impact of an event of, of some nature. It may not even be a hurricane, it could be something else. Uh, but, but we have to learn from these experiences so that we can better hone the machinery that will govern in these circumstances. And that's a good point, and there's something that I perhaps wanted to ask Ms. Hines. Uh, I know it's early days yet, but what are some of the lessons learned out of the experience from Tropical Storm Matthew? The whole, the whole issue of stakeholder partnership and collaboration is very important to the process and the need for all stakeholders to know their roles and responsibilities and understand how the system works and how these various decisions impact on them, on their various agencies, on the public as a whole and on the system. As we go forward, it is hoped that we continue in not only the traditional relationships, the traditional partnerships that we have, but look at the non-traditional stakeholders. Um, I must admit, in terms of, it was very good to see the Barbados Chamber of Commerce um, private sector coming in and being a valued partner um, in this whole process. It worked well, and we hope that we can continue on this path. There were some concerns about the home best during a situation like this, and some suggestions by the chairman of the Vagrant and Homeless Society that there be special provisions made for them. Is this something that's being looked into? What's being dealt with, the, with that segment of the population? Yes, in terms of the, there is consideration for vulnerable persons, and they will discuss in that particular um, section of the section of the population. Um, there are other special needs groups that we also have to consider as we do our contingency and preparedness plans, and that is a feature of the national emergency management system. As you can see, there there is a wide there are a wide number of stakeholders in the process, not only public and private sector. You have the volunteers and you have all the various groups. And we have to work together to ensure that um, we return the country to a state of normalcy and, and no one is displaced um, from any of these events. But in terms of perhaps these, this segment of the society is not necessarily one that mixes well with the rest of the society. They might not heed the, the calls or the warnings. Mm -hmm. Are there any provisions to actually go out and get them, to take them into shelter? We would have to sit down with the, the society and engage because obviously as you look at the various groups, there are different strategies of engagement. And that is one where we, we definitely would have to sit down and, and go through that. Um, it is a dynamic process and one that we would really need to to look at and investigate so that at the end of the day we have the best solution. Um, Mr. Acting 
Prime Minister, I want to take you back to the naughty, naughty issue. Yesterday when your cabinet colleague, the AG, was terming businesses that open as irresponsible, your cabinet colleague in St. Lucie had his business open. What, what do you say to that? As I said earlier, I, I can't operate on the basis of reports. I, mean, you, you I spoke to, to him as not a report. You, well, you spoke to him. I did it, and I would have to speak to him before I could. I could. I could speak to that. Um, and there was a report about a very large business, business house in St. Philip, that also did something in defiance of what was uh, the position that we were taking nationally. And I again, I say that I would want to hear from 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 any of these people first. We, we, it is not a, a legally, it's nothing that binds you legally, but is there, there's an understanding. We operate on the basis of certain protocols, uh, as, as, as Kerry is saying. We, ex we, we, we have a broad stakeholdership for that purpose, and we, we hope that that can continue. Now, on the point of the, the homelessness, now, I, or the homeless, you raised, and I, uh, to reinforce Kerry's point, there, there are other people as well. That, that work on the shelters don't turn back homeless right. people to start with. And while I appreciate what Mr. Safri is doing, the Homeless and Vagrants Association, we can't take away from the Clay Gallup shelter operated by the National Assistance Board, um, has been operating for years. And of course, the, the many different um, church groups that, that, that do a lot of uh, good work in this area. The Catholics have, have one that's quite active, as you know. Um, and in essence, you know, I want that, in recognizing what you've highlighted, there are a, a lot of bright lights, public-spirited Barbadians, public-spirited Barbadian organizations and individuals that will look out for those who are, you know, infirmed, who uh, may not have a, a place, a shelter, for whatever reason, and, and, and they do look out for them. And, and, and um, we certainly didn't have any, any serious situation of homeless homeless people uh, seeking seeking shelter in any itinerant circumstances. There was, there was a roof available. And, and again, the, the, the shelter network as well, the, 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 the Category 1 shelters, of course, were, were also available as well. Do you think you need to revisit the legislative framework? Because you mentioned, I think you may have suggested this more of a voluntary it, it, yeah, well, yes, I, I mean, again, it's something that we need to look at, and, and it is receiving the attention. Of the, as I mentioned, the Minister of Home Affairs is also the Attorney General, and um, it's something that, that can be looked at, and of course we will be discussing it as early as tomorrow when the Cabinet meets. Um, Did you do want to add to that? No, I can. The Acting Prime Minister is correct. We are going to look at it. Uh, we have to look at all, all sides of, of the equation. I think one of the things that is come to the fore is that we've had protocols in place that has worked for us as a country for many, many years. Um, but there are new actors um, that we probably need to get in to sit down with us so that everyone understands their role. Um, because that is, if anything, if there's one thing that's, that's come out of it, that's it, that, that the fact that we have new personnel uh, who have never been part of this process before and we need to ensure that they understand the, the roles and stuff, so we're going we're gonna to get to that. You use the word naughty, something that probably was well beyond naughty, assuming that some of the videos we saw yesterday being circulated, and, and literally not everything we know see on social media is, is, is correct. But there were videos, several videos in several locations of people using automobiles and doing all types of stunts on public highways, using the wet conditions. They saw people, assuming they're correct, and they're worried, that's what it seems to be, using uh, the wrong the boats, the drift around wrong the boats, people going to car parks and drifted, people actually videoing themselves, appearing to video themselves, doing stunts on the roads. And that certainly was beyond not even really drawn to your attention or the attention of the police. And do you have a comment on that? That, 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 that behavior is restricted to the overwhelming minority of Barbadians. I think the overwhelming majority appreciated. Uh, what we were facing and, uh, and what we as a government were, what we were trying to do, or should I say trying to prevent. Um, and again, such, uh, such, such individuals that engage in that type of behavior will be, um, will be, will be, will be dealt with accordingly. 
you're not supposed to do that kind of thing even in good weather. So I mean, it is it is it is something that we that we that we that we need to we need to we need to look at. Did you just come to the attention of the um, law enforcement? Not to my knowledge, and I I have not had a briefing um, from them. So not to my knowledge as yet. Have, the, have your you. neighbours asked for any assistance as yet? Nothing formal has uh, has, has been communicated communicated to me. Um, um, I, I will uh, be heading to government headquarters and, and reaching out, and, um, and we will go from there. The information I have is that the entire airspace is now open. Arnesville, I think here in Nora, one of the airports in St. Lucia was still closed. Uh, George Charles was open. And um, Arnesville is now open, and Vincent is now open, and um, so 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 we, we, everyone is in a position, of presumably, to assess the impact of Matthew. We can go from there, but I will, will certainly be reaching out when I when I get to government headquarters. Did you really want to add any final takeaways, lessons learned? Um, no, just to thank the, the prime minister for taking the time to come in and sit down with us and and offer his his support. Um, and I know I did speak to you personally this morning, but let me just thank all of you, uh, members of the media in particular. Um, I, I, I'm sometimes critical of you, but let me say for the record um, that in fact, that over the last 72 hours that you have done well for this country. Um, so thanks for your overwhelming support. We just heard from Acting Prime Minister Richard Seeley, Attorney General and Minister of Home Affairs Adriel Brathwaite and Director of the Department of Emergency Management Carrie Hines, who updated the nation this morning on the passage of Tropical Storm Matthew. In summary, the storm dumped approximately six inches of rain on the island, but there were no reports of injury or loss of life. Of the 63 reports received, 23 were of trees falling, seven utility poles, nine power outages, nine homes suffered damages, and eight reports of flooding. That's it for now, but for the very latest, visit our website, www.barbadostoday.bb. Also, subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We are on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you, as well as Channel 99 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Desmond Brown.